Mr. President, the South Africa we know, the home we understand. In 1950, very few of us in this room were alive. You were one of those that was alive. The world had 2.6 billion people, and South Africa was one of those. Let's see how these countries played themselves out at the time. Mr. President, there they split up, and there is South Africa. We want to tell the narrative of South Africa over this time from 1950 to 2011. The narrative as we play it, it shows a South Africa that was growing in terms of economy and in terms of wealth. On the one axis there, it's a life expectancy. On this side, it's income. Income was growing, life expectancy was growing. 1976, 1979, the sanctions bite, change is imminent, and South Africa's uh, life expectancy grows. But by 2000, uh, then life expectancy begins to decline, and by 2005, 2007, life expectancy begins to increase, and by 2011, that's where South Africa is. Mr. President, that's the context of South Africa. What has happened in the census? Here is where we were in 1996, 40.5 million, and this is what the story of South Africa is. It has been growing, and the deaths, uh, deaths occurring, deaths occurring, migrants coming in, the numbers increasing. 2008, 2011, 2011 we have 51 million, 8 people in South Africa. The narrative of South Africa doesn't end only there. It is a country that has nine provinces. Let's see what has happened to the provinces. By province, this is the South Africa I know, the home I understand. You can see the bulges, the bubbles, the bubbles show that probably I do not know, but let's rank them. And the statistics talk. There is the ranking, Kauten 12.3 million, Guazulu Natal 10.2 million, and Northern Cape 1.1. In this regard, Kauten has become much bigger than all provinces. It has taken spot number one, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Kwazulu Natal used to be there in 2001, uh, but it has lost that first position. Mr. President, as you will see the results when we present them in map form, you'll see that uh, the size of Houghton in terms of map, uh, it grows, and the size of uh, Northern Cape shrinks. Uh, these are called cartograms. Uh, they represent the populations of the provinces in terms of the size of the population. It keeps the same shape of the province, but increases uh, reports on the proportionate size of the population. At the level of municipalities, we also see that uh, growth has occurred, in particular in the province of Houghton, but uh, in also in, in provinces where growth has not been that big, uh, in terms of municipalities, growth has been quite significant, as we can see uh, in KwaZulu Natal, Eastern Cape, uh, and uh, other parts uh, of the countries. In terms of population group, the South Africa, I know the home I understand, 80% uh, black, African, 8.9 colored, 8.7 white, and Indian, Asian, 2.6%. Everybody gets born at age zero. This is a graph that represents the population by age. And all groups show this pattern, or uh, this uh, pyramid that we have here. And the pyramid, as we see it here, uh, it shows that uh, more than 10% of the people are aged 0 to 4, and uh, the age is up there 0 to 80. Now, let's play the pyramid. Let's go to white and see what happens there. Look at the pyramid. It has changed. It shows that there are fewer people at age 0 to 4, more in the area of 40 to 60, and uh, a little bit more at 80 years. We go back to black, and it shows that there are more people, Africans, African black is a young population as a group. Indeed, amongst colors, it's almost the same, and Indians are more, or whites are more like Indians in terms of population structure. This is the population structure, and this has implications on education. It has implications on policy in the way the age structure is, uh, is, uh, looks. Mr. President, let's look at the population on the move. Why is Kauten what it is? And why is KwaZulu Natal what it is? And why Northern Cape is what it is? In this presentation, we are talking about migration between provinces. And in between provinces, let's just look at what has happened in terms of inflow of people to Northern Cape. 
Very few people uh, came from uh, Eastern Cape, yet and fewer from uh, KwaZulu-Natal and fewer from uh, um, Pumalanga. The blue arrows show the flow of people into Northern Cape. What has happened in Limpopo? A lot more uh, flowing into uh, Limpopo from Gauteng, uh, a lot uh, flowing from uh, Pumalanga into Limpopo, uh, into Limpopo. Now, let's see what happens in KZN. Some people coming into KZN from Gauteng, others from the Eastern Cape, but very few from uh, Limpopo and very few from the Western Cape. We want to go to the Western Cape. There is the Eastern Cape flowing into, migrating into, 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 into Western Cape. The size of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the bar there shows how many people and also quite a lot uh, flowing from Gauteng. Eastern Cape flowing into uh, uh, Western Cape, people looking for jobs, people flowing from Gauteng to Western Cape retiring. The, the demographic profile of these people is very, very interesting. Now, uh, inflow into Gauteng from all provinces, Limpopo, KwaZulu-Natal, Eastern Cape, Northwest, Pumalanga, a few from uh, Northern Cape, but this is the flow. That's what has made Gauteng what it is. Of course, let's look at outflow. Uh, outflows out of Limpopo into Gauteng. Outflows out of uh, uh, Northwest into Gauteng, into other provinces. Outflows out of Eastern Cape into uh, Western Cape, into uh, KwaZulu-Natal, into Gauteng. This is the history, this is the narrative of movement of the population of South Africa, the South Africa I know, the home I understand. The result and effect of this is that over this period, that axis of uh, Northwest, Gauteng, and Pumalanga grew by 26%. Western Cape grew by 29%, and the rest of the provinces grew by 6% over all this period. The N4 axis, the Maputo Corridor, the route that comes from Namibia seems to be, and the mining economy and Gauteng itself has a pull effect on the population of South Africa. What society are we? This is a representation of income. You can see that uh, this is the, the black income uh, for men, and if I press here, that will be the black in income for women. It shows a, a population by population group uh, black women at the end of the scale, uh, 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 on average, earn 4,800. Uh, that's the Tandy story uh, that uh, is told by the National Planning Commission, that Tandy is trapped in that 4,800 at the bottom. Let's go to white population, much to, the, much to the right. You can see that much to the right in terms of average income. We go back to colored uh, women, we see uh, a match to the, to the left, and in Indian, in terms of income, we see a match uh, to the right as well. And if we look at men, the situation even gets uh, more interesting. Uh, that's Indian men and white men. That's the income, average income that uh, we get, and the black income over there of men uh, shows that kind of uh, situation. There is movement amongst blacks, but there are the Tandis that are trapped in the lower end. That's what uh, this story is about. Mr. President, the resultant effect of this is that whites have an average income of 365, blacks 60,000, a society whose income disparities are very huge. Average total is uh, 103. Over the last 10 years, income has grown by about 117%, inflation by 77. So, Overall, in terms of net, there is a 30% net increase in real incomes in society. Now, this is a very interesting story, Mr. President. It talks about who was there in 1930 that we counted in 1990, and find out what their education is across South Africa, like the four race groups. On, the X, uh, on this axis, we are looking at how many people completed grade three and on this axis across time by race group. It's a tale of South Africa, the South Africa I know, and then we'll also show what has happened to those who are grade 10 over time. Let's play. 
There we see the blacks. At the beginning of time, they were 40%. They increased to about 60% to go to grade three. Whites have started at grade three already. In 1930, they were already grade three. We see Indians and Asians. And at the end of time, we all have grade three. That's where the, the, the end game is. We all have grade three at the end of time, 2001. But the, at the beginning of time, you can see whites already had grade three. Uh, colors and the Indians had a bit more above the 60%. Blacks were below 40%. Now let's look at what has happened to grade 10. At grade six, or at grade six, you would buy a liquor as a black person. Uh, you would buy a brandy and uh, drink it in the apartheid, yes, but if you didn't have a grade six certificate, you wouldn't take liquor. <laughs> now, here is grade 10. There is the story about why it's already above 70%. Uh, Indians, blacks, and uh, 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 colors started at the lower end. And we can see the graph of the Indians growing, catching up with the whites around the 1970s. Blacks and Indians map together towards the end of 1990s. They grow like that. They grow, and they are above 60 70%. And by 20 oh, 11, this is where they are. This is the story of education in South Africa. This is the story of income disparities in South Africa. This is what it is. Mr. President, there is the story in numbers. This is the resultant story in 1996. But let's play this and see what happens uh, from 1996. We can see that the brown disappears. The brown disappears. It's overtaken by the blue, the lighter uh, pink. Uh, we can see that 10 to 15 percent, the drop in no school, the drop in no school over time in 2011. This is the picture. Having started where we were in 1996. Mr. President, this is the South Africa. I know the home I understand. Let's look at service delivery. Water. In 2001, this is where water was. Uh, this is uh, the lighter uh, yellow there, uh, lighter yellow suit, and the lighter in uh, KwaZulu Natal and uh, Limpopo shows uh, less water in the uh, western parts of, uh, 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 of the country. In northwest, there we see that uh, there is uh, uh, less electricity provide, uh, or water provided. Let's see what happens over time. Let's play. There it is. There's more water coming through this, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the South Africa. There's less. Uh, the speed of water is not as fast as it would be in all other provinces. You can see that Eastern Cape and KwaZulu Natal remain a little bit behind. The Statistician General and Statistics South Africa was asked to go and count, not to explain why this happens. But we got interested in why it happens. Look at that. This is Eastern Cape. You have to push this water from the valley to the top of the mountain, where people live. Eastern Cape and KwaZulu Natal has relief that makes water servicing of water very difficult. And this is the situation. And the RTP targets may not have been met as equally in, all, in, this, in these two provinces because of the relief. Maybe it's a, 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 a strategy uh, to fend off enemies and you go and stay on top of the mountains so that you defeat enemies, but it doesn't bring water to you. Mr. President, finally, let's look at uh, the story of electricity. We have turned it yellow so that you can understand the yellow suit. There it is in 1996. The dark spots reflect where electricity is lower. The yellow spots show where electricity, and you can see in the Western Cape, it was already covered. Let's see what the story is as we go through. We can see the country turning yellow, turning yellow. It is like a census. It is like a census year every year from 2001 to 2003. The country is turning yellow. It's 2007. The country is turning yellow. It's turning more yellow. 2010, 2011, the entire country is yellow. <laughs> Mr. President, these are the results. I've demonstrated that the results are simple. Uh, these are the, this, this is the story of South Africa. This is the South Africa I know, the home I understand. These are the results of Census 2011 that we have just presented to yourself and the nation. Thank you very much. Oh, what a